this very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. That is what NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy, said at a press conference on September 10th, 2025. It's a pretty bold claim. So let's take a look at what he was announcing and why this leopard spot rock is at the center of the claim. NASA have literally said, we think we might have found evidence of life on Mars. So they sent out the evidence to the scientific community. And so far, no one has found another explanation for what NASA saw in those rock samples from Mars. The Perseverance rover on Mars, this guy back here, has found a potential biosignature in a rock on the red planet, Jezero Crater, an area that millions of years ago was a river, but now is a dried up dirt bed. Just like here on Earth, the bottoms of rivers and oceans are excellent places to look for life. In this case, microbial life that may have once called Mars home. Essentially, Perseverance found minerals in the core of that rock that are really hard to explain. It's not like we found a fossil, even of a microbe, but these minerals are more exciting than they might sound at first. On Earth, those minerals are produced by living organisms, so it might have a biological origin here too, but we can't be certain just yet. Maybe there is some chemistry, maybe specific to the ancient Martian conditions, that we just don't know about or don't understand yet, and maybe it also produces these minerals too. We have to be careful when making big claims like this. For example, a few years ago, claims of a detection of phosphine on Venus were greeted with great excitement, but slowly that disappeared with more data. Phosphine is also what we call a biosignature. On Earth, it's produced by living organisms, and it's hard to produce in other ways that we know of. But the Venus data was really complicated, and eventually the detection turned out to be false. Here, it's much less likely to be false, as Perseverance is on Mars making these measurements in person, or in rover. But the origin of the materials is the big question here. NASA is playing it very safe when it comes to this announcement. The sample in question came from a rock named Chayava Falls, and the sample itself was named Sapphire Canyon. The rock was first noticed while Perseverance was exploring the Bright Angel Formation, a set of rocky outcrops in an ancient river valley. That sample has become, without doubt, the closest we have ever got to discovering life on Mars. To be clear, this wouldn't be like little green dudes or intelligent life, but rather microbial life that could have existed back when Mars was still covered in water, and all in all, a more hospitable place. This is already a groundbreaking discovery, but we do need to conduct further investigations before we can go from potential biosignature to concrete evidence of life. With the publication of the papers detailing this discovery, NASA is also making the data available to the wider scientific community, so it can be interrogated, tested, and questioned on all fronts to confirm or refute its biological potential. NASA do want to find life on Mars. It would be very exciting and, frankly, a monumental moment in human history, but it doesn't want to claim a discovery and turn out to be wrong. That would be embarrassing and also risk devaluing future claims if and when they happen. The 3.2 by 2 foot arrowhead shaped rock first grabbed the attention of the teams involved due to the colourful spots it showed. Hence, it got the nickname of the Leopard Spot Rock. And the spots have also been referred to as poppy seeds as well. It was thought that it was possible that the spots could have been left behind by microbial life if it had been using the raw ingredients of the rock, so things like organic carbon, sulfur and phosphorus, as an energy source. And so further investigation was granted. In higher resolution images, the rover's instruments found a distinct pattern of minerals arranged into reacting fronts, which are these points of contact where chemical and physical reactions take place. These reactions caused the leopard spots and carried the signature of two iron-rich materials called vivianite and griagite. Now, full disclosure, I also didn't know what these things were before today, so let's learn about them together. Vivianite, also called hydrated iron phosphate, is frequently found on Earth in sediments, peat bogs, and around decaying organic matter. Similarly, griagite, or iron sulfide, can also be produced by microbial life. These two minerals together, which look like they formed from the reaction between sediment and organic matter, may well be a fingerprint of microbial life on Mars, which would use the energy produced in the reaction to help it grow. Now, 
it is possible to produce these minerals without life. But the rocks in question don't show any evidence of experiencing the sustained high pressures or acidic conditions required to do this. It's possible it happened, but we can't see how at the moment. Something that is particularly interesting here is that the discovery involved some of the youngest rocks that Perseverance has investigated. We had assumed that signs of ancient life would be confined to older rock formations, but this discovery seems to suggest that we should revisit that assumption. It could mean Mars could have been habitable for a longer period than we thought, or later in the planet's history than we previously thought. It also remains possible that older rocks also contain signs of life, but it's harder to detect them for some reason, and we haven't spotted it just yet. Before getting too excited, NASA spent a year trying to find other explanations for these minerals in these rocks, other than from ancient life. As of right now, no credible alternatives have been found. As I keep saying though, I want to emphasize that this doesn't mean we've confirmed life on Mars, but all signs are beginning to point that way. I just want to be clear about what has been found and what hasn't, and not oversell what is happening here, but it is starting to get exciting. NASA clearly believes that life existed on Mars, and that this is evidence of that, but it's playing it really safe for now. It doesn't believe life still exists on Mars, but millions of years ago it did. As far as we know right now, Mars is currently entirely inhabited by robots. What we really need now though, to follow up on this discovery, is one of two things. The first is to bring samples of rocks like this back to Earth to study close up in labs down here. A rover can only do so much. There is, or was, a Mars sample return mission planned for the next decade or so, but recent NASA budget cuts have now cancelled this mission, despite the design and planning being pretty far along. The second option would be to get a geochemist or similar to Mars as an astronaut, and take some decent equipment with them, and then we might be able to really push forward this investigation to a satisfying conclusion. Without one of those things happening, we're stuck with potential biosignature for now. Getting a result like this into a peer-reviewed journal, as has just happened with this work, is already a very significant step. It shows that this is a real possibility, and that the scientific method is supporting the evidence of a possible biosignature on Mars. Honestly, I think that when we finally find confirmed concrete evidence of life on another planet or moon, it will change pretty much everything. It will change how we view our place and status in the universe. It will have ripple effects through religion and philosophy. And also importantly, it will change how billions of people feel when we look up at the stars at night, knowing that we aren't alone. I think that it will turn out that life is pretty common in the universe, although intelligent life probably isn't. I did say when, not if, we find evidence. That's just my personal view, that the universe is so wide and varied that surely we can't be alone, right? It would be almost scarier if we were. If this evidence is confirmed too, then it opens up so many other possibilities and would surely confirm that life is possible on many other solar system bodies, including other planets, as well as many of the large moons, like Enceladus, Europa, Titan, and so on. That would be life on two out of the eight planets, so it's probably more common than expected. One final thought though is that it really looks like those NASA budget cuts are having an impact. I think that a discovery of this size would historically involve a much bigger stage and maybe even some chairs for the speakers. And I was surprised to see them all stood crowded around for this one. Maybe I'm wrong and this is always how they would do it, but it's just something that I thought looked a little bit funny. My thoughts are also with the many NASA scientists that may have worked on this discovery, but have since lost their jobs due to those same budget cuts. I don't know how many that would be or how to find out that information, but I'm pretty sure it's a non-negligible number. Please feel free to leave me any questions or comments you have about all of this down below. I would love to know how you feel about this potential discovery and how you would feel if extraterrestrial life were to be confirmed, even if it was just microbial. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.